Hey folks, Steve here with another Axis Empires Ultimate Edition video. This will be, ideally, the 1938 video of our Dice of Decision campaign playthrough. So we've managed to get through the first year. Uh, and it took some time to talk through things just because, um, well, you know, every, every card play matters. And we tend to go back to back, card to card. Uh, and I want to explain that along the way. So 1937 took up a whole video. I... I don't want to um, slow down too much. It's, it is possible that I'm only going to get partway through 1938. If you're seeing this video, the video title will educate you on how successful I was in that endeavor. But either way, uh, this uh, video will at least comprise of a lot of 1938 with the, uh, the new card play. And while we have not seen Limited War Breakout anywhere... Uh, countries continue to uh, attempt to gain ground and allies, and I'm sure we're going to see things start to heat up. 1938, you figure, you know, the war in Europe started in the fall of 39. You know, we've still got some time in Europe, but uh, on the Dysunso map, sure to see some, uh, some additional activities spark up here soon, I would think. Um, now, Really quick, I should let you know, if you're watching this video and you haven't watched previous uh, segments of this series, I am writing a narrative uh, session report on Board Game Geek to accompany this video series. So obviously the video series uh, is my commentary as I play through, trying to figure out the strategy and cover the play-by-play -play of how things are going for each faction as they play through, uh, and we reach you know, each major event in the campaign. The written session report on Board Game Geek is more of a narrative style. So because we're venturing off into alternate history pretty severely here, and I like to think there's a nice kind of narrative forming, I've decided to write for fun um, a sort of, we'll call it junior high textbook uh, level of detail and fidelity accounting of the war. So I've already posted that to Board Game Geek the first initial post in the singular thread is all the background stuff. The end of World War One, well, World War One, the end of World War One, the treaties, the interbellum period, and then uh, once we actually get up to the start of the campaign, I've now since posted a uh, comment post on that thread that describes the events of 1937 in kind of broad terms. Um, now that we're functionally playing the game, it is harder to kind of fill in the details of just historical commentary because it is just, hey, this is what's happening. This is what's happening on the board. I, you know, I can only do so much to flavor that up a bit. Um, but it, it does make for interesting reading, I hope. So please check that out. I'll put a link to the thread in the uh, description below so you can follow along. Ideally, I will be posting uh, the session report narrative around the same time that the video goes live. So if you're watching this video right now, I suspect the 19, uh, 1938 post is in the thread already. Um, if there's any delay, it may only be a day or two delay at, at most. So you can watch this, you can read that. Maybe you just want to read that because you don't got time for videos. That's okay too. Um, and if you want to kind of, you know, you see something crazy occur in the session report and you want to get the play-by-play -play of that, then you can hop back to the videos. They should be able to align pretty well. Even if I have to do multiple videos for a game year, I'll probably do, you know, for every video, for every video should be uh, a new comment, I guess. Um, I'll, I'll do it that way, and it should be easy to, to map one to the other. So, with that said, uh, we are at the spring of 1938. Technically, uh, we've already seen January and February as part of the tail end of the 1937 video, and uh, each faction is basically uh, getting ready to rock and roll in the new year. So um, I don't know that I'm going to talk a whole lot about each card in great, great detail. Um, again, we're going to like kind of do the preamble. We'll play through all of spring. Then we'll do the summer preamble and we'll play through summer off camera uh, and so on and so forth. I just think, you know, there, right now there's not a whole lot to cover uh, because the option card events tend to be rolling on some charts having a marker to play signifying influence or maybe alignment as well as really basic uh, reinforcements, either stuff going into the, 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 the lay box or directly into the force pool. We'll get a few replacements, so a few units get added here and there. 
Um, usually nothing super dramatic uh, other than when diplomacy actually succeeds and we get to place influence markers, which I really have to say the last couple of turns we've had uh, back in 1937, there really wasn't a whole lot of successful diplomacy. Uh, the, the Germany got really, really lucky. The fact that they were able to get two influence on the board apparently is very, very lucky. Um, when you look at how the Western Allies and Russia has fared, they've done very poorly, excepting with Russia getting Bulgaria to have Soviet influence. But pretty much everything else is, is tricky. Um, I will say uh, that the Soviets also got influence on Siberia, on the Dicenso map. So, I mean, I guess if I was really measuring this, um, the Soviet Union's doing okay on diplomacy, not what they would like. Uh, the Axis is doing um, good as Germany, not so good as Japan. Japan hasn't really been able to make much headway and is, in fact, facing a lot of Chinese uh, opposition. And then, um, you know, the Western Allies just have not gotten anything. They didn't get Belgium. They've not gotten any success on anything that they've tried. I'm not sure what effect that's going to be in the big scheme of things, but it is amusing to kind of just see the total lack of success. I'm, like, I'm not sure what to do with that. That's what the dice are giving us. I'm going to hang tough. So, yeah, let's start talking about uh, the spring, and we'll, we'll really focus here on the, I guess, the Axis cards because they're first up. We'll, we'll just talk about them each in turn, then we'll talk about the Western Allies, then we'll talk the Soviets as we play through what will be the first turn of spring and, and all that cadence that I already explained. Don't know why I'm saying it again. Anyway, um, also very fun, I've got a remote shutter now, Bluetooth shutter for my camera, so um, I'm going to be able to start and to stop and, and do recording much easier uh, than before. We'll see what kind of cool uh, improvements that will make to my video quality over time. I should have gotten one a long time ago. It just took me forever to, to bother to do that. So we'll, we'll see. You know, you'll see if you notice a difference when we go from clip to clip. There should be less of a jostling of the camera for a quarter of a second when I'm hitting the button on the touch screen of my phone. So, all right, uh, let's take a look at the Axis cards and the beginning of spring 1938. Okay, so for the Axis, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Germany first. So their diplomatic play here is going to be pretty strong, I guess, for their attempts. So we're going to start off with Ribbentrop Diplomacy. Um, not sure what to expect here, but the nice thing, uh, nice thing is we'll get some additional units. We're going to get a multinational unit uh, in our delay box and eventual force pull. That'll be good. So that Germany could potentially, you know, group up with some Austro-Hungarians, Austro maybe. Um, and then any of these other results could help us get some more influence on the board or something to our benefit. And then we'll follow that up with the summer card, plan to be diplomatic mission in the Middle East. The hope is, and I, you know, I don't know how likely this is to be, um, the hope is we can get influence in Turkey. So again, really having to try hard to reestablish the Central Powers Alliance. It's interesting how hard it is to do that. I, I do wonder, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe it would be too much of a cheat to say like, oh, well, those those two powers, Austria-Hungary and the Ottomans should just get some Axis influence on them because they used to be in an alliance. But really, when you think about it, like Italy used to be uh, an allied, you know, an allied faction you, you could think of, but in the history, they became fascist and opposed the allies. So I, you know, I, I don't know, but I'm having to put some pretty hard card effort into trying to get uh, Turkey into the fold here, and the uh, Germans are certainly going to try to do that. Now for Japan, and we'll just talk about them quickly because I'll I'll play through the results and we'll talk about them at least after the first turn. Um, Japan is still trying to do some diplomacy. Um, there's not much else we can hope for other than to try to get something for our efforts. It'd be really great if we could somehow get some influence on the Far East Republic or something, or into China would actually be a nice pickup. Something. Um, because right now we're, we're, we've got nothing, but in the summer, we're going to get army plan adopted. And 
the hope is we do this in the summer, we can get the most bang for our buck uh, in terms of the replacement steps here. And then uh, this is going to put, uh, where is it? It's on here somewhere. Um, there it is. Limited war is now in effect. So, uh, you know, having expected to have limited war break out in the historical situation uh, where we're trying to get, uh, you know, territory from the Hopei province and expect some fighting that didn't occur. So we've kind of just been getting stuff and, and getting our demands, but there's only so many of those cards to really play and I kind of need to get moving. So as Japan, if you take that army plan adopted, um, you can trigger limited war and then you, you kind of get that opportunity um, to, to start things on your own terms, uh, at least to some degree. And I, and I think as Japan, I just need to do that. I, my planning has been thrown off a great deal because I expected to be at war already. We're not. There's only so much success diplomatically I can expect. I need to start moving and start making some progress or uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flail not knowing how to get things moving. So I just, I got to start something somewhere. Germany will continue to kind of make a longer term preparation because uh, we expect to have to do, you know, some pretty, pretty epic fighting on the continent is, is the expectation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play through this first uh, turn of spring for the Axis, and then we'll come back, talk about the results very quickly, and then we'll break into the Western Allied card play and turns, do the same thing for the Soviets. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll off camera play through the second turn of spring, and we'll come back to talk about summer. I think that's the cadence that will be the easiest to explain uh, as you're watching the video. I know this is we're really headed into the territory, guys, where I know viewership is going to drop off significantly. That is okay. I, I cannot expect that everybody's going to want to watch everything. I just I can't. There will be a few maybe diehard people who do, and I appreciate you if you uh, do stick with it and watch it the whole way through. But the amount of talking to viewership ratio is going to like not, you know, it, it's not going to be a whole lot of value add for me to talk to things that no one's going to watch. So I'll, I'll continue to operate in a very summarized format here as we play through. And hopefully that will mean in later videos, we, we can still cover a lot of time, uh, but not show every, every counter move or anything like that. It's just not going to be worth worthwhile uh, unless it's a very significant event, then, then maybe we slow things down. So, all right, I'm going to play through this axis uh, turn and we'll come back here in just a second. Okay, so I uh, played that first turn with the option cards for the Axis, and while we could still see some additional things happen in the next spring turn here uh, because of the political political event segment, already we saw some, some I think, goodness. Um, so Germany got to, uh, what was the result? Um, neutrals pressured, I think. Uh, so we got neutrals pressured and they used it. They didn't have a lot of options that were like, oh, that's a really good choice. Um, but what they decided to do, Germany did, is they used the result to pressure France and removed the Soviet influence, which um, is it was an interesting choice. I was like, given that opportunity, I was kind of hoping that, you know, the Germans were hoping anyway, uh, that they would get a result like that um, because the pickle they were in was, wow, we couldn't get the Franco-Russian Entente policy in play uh, if if that influence remained and we wanted to, say, fight France or whatever. Um, fighting France at all would have guaranteed a two-front war, even a three-front war if you count Italy. Um, and that's not really sustainable or it's not good for Germany to have to fight that way no matter what they do. So instead... Um, what removing the Soviet influence does is it changes the priority of who France aligns with um, if we were to attack into France, basically. So if we attack France as a neutral minor country, um, you follow the sort of breakdown of priority. Now, technically, um, France being communist the way that it is, it is considered to always be adjacent to uh, the Soviet faction for purposes of alignment. However, if I follow that priority, I think I'm reading this right, 
um, by removing that influence marker, I've effectively turned it into a 50-50 chance, which is worthwhile. Um, we would certainly want France to align with Britain or the Western allies rather than Russia. Um, and we'd rather be fighting that um, at, at one time than the other. And, you know, if, if for some reason Germany ends up fighting Russia first, okay. But now we're at least not having to fight two land fronts immediately, uh, which helps. Which means, yeah, the Germans could now focus on Belgium and have a pretty good chance, well, again, 50-50, a 50-50 chance of aligning, uh, I think, to the Western allies. So... Um, I think, I think I'm following that. So that's the move we made. We maybe could have used that to do something else, but that felt useful because now without that influence, um, we get a little further down the line. Now, if we get another one and, you know, we get that result again and we can remove the Soviet influence in Italy, that'd be even better because we could then effectively avoid dealing with Italy, maybe entirely if we can, um, and maybe even try to align it our direction eventually, uh, which would be very interesting, of effectively fostering a democratic coup in Italy. Um, if we could do any of those things, that would be nice. And in fact, if we can actually come to think of it, um, I don't think there's any reason why we couldn't now try to influence France. So what does that look like? Can we prepare, prepare uh, France to be an Axis power? I think we could maybe try. I don't really know if that does a whole lot of good for us uh, either way, but it would be nice to see if we could do it. Um, I wouldn't mind that if, if we could make it happen. So really interesting uh, thing to happen where we can strip that influence. Now for Japan, uh, they're, they, they had a very basic turn um, and there's not much to show in terms of the board state other than we managed to get a, a, a Chinese incident event or maybe a forget the event that, that came up, uh, where we were able to switch the posture of one of the Chinese factions. And so Japan got fortunate. They were actually able to make uh, the communist Chinese into acceptance treaty. They managed to shift the treaty. Now what that does is it kind of reverses that early, you know, United Second Front event we got in Dice of Decision. And now it leaves communist China separate from the nationalist cause. So if Japan were to uh, go to war with, you know, really doesn't matter who, if they go into Hope um, and they end up fighting the nationalists, they're not, they're not going to be at war with the communists, um, at least to start anyway. And that would be a benefit to Japan. So however you want to measure this, I think you'd, you'd say that this first turn of spring has been generally beneficial to the Axis it kind of helps the political situation for them just a little bit uh, to be able to operate. Now, for uh, the Western Allies card play, just to move on into that, uh, and on the Total Creek map, we're going to have continuing rearmament. Um, this is just kind of a required card we need to get out, and it's going to be our rearmament card for the year. This is going to give us uh, one British step, so not a whole lot to get excited about. But it will open up the capability uh, for more cards, case in point, the Arab League, which we're going to try to get some uh, other countries uh, into the Allied fold. So that's the game plan for the Western Allies, who are going to be taking their turn next. Um, and then on the Pacific map, Dicenso map, uh, we've got more diplomacy. Now, it is possible with this Chang diplomacy, we could maybe get a result that reverses course and we get the United Second Front back. Unclear, but after we are done playing that, we're going to play Commonwealth Rearmament because we would like, uh, given that, well, I guess the I guess the British player doesn't know for sure uh, if we're going to be expecting fighting um, on the continent or not, but it just makes sense that, hey, let's, let's try to get rearmed as best we can. Uh, we'll go with that. If we can do an American rearmament, we'll do that down the road. But um, this makes sense for now to just keep things strengthening on the board the best we can. So, yeah, uh, not really a, a set of cards where we will expect to see a lot of diplomatic uh, changes. That's going to come later in the turn, maybe, or not later in the turn, later in the year, if anything. 
uh, for the Alex. So there should be a pretty straightforward play through for them. Um, so let me take care of that first bit, and we'll uh, we'll talk about the Soviets next. Okay, that wasn't particularly interesting, to be honest. Uh, we rolled the Chang Diplomacy and got no result. And uh, for the continuing rearmament, it just was a, uh, a step placed in Britain. So pretty boring, all things considered. But now we're going to go to the Soviet Union. And what do we have? Well, we're going to do forces for the Far East. Um, this is just to open up our capacity so that we can play a decent card on the Eastern map. Uh, we will be following that up with a five new, uh, new five-year plan uh, on the... Uh, Totaler Creek map, so not a whole lot to get excited about there. And for the uh, Dysenso map, we're going to get some steps out there. We don't, we have some steps, um, so we're going to kind of front load some step building on the uh, Dysenso map. We'll follow that up with the Russian rearmament. So we're going to kind of play strong, expecting. Uh, that the Soviet Union may find itself fighting a land war in Asia against Japan. Um, it's kind of like the only option they really, really have. Like, like what other cards could they be playing right now? Um, so those are going to be straightforward. Now, I, I really don't expect um, a whole lot is going to be worth noting here for the Soviets. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play through the, the Soviet turn there, uh, both sides of the map. Then I will play through the next spring turn, through both, uh, for all three factions, which should, should be straightforward. The only real die rolls are for Germany, uh, and I guess, yeah, Germany, Japan, and, and the Western Allies and Dicenso. Um, everything else will just be moving around, shuffling around as, as we desire. Um, and then when I come back here in a second, for you at least, uh, we'll be talking about the summer cards and go through that. Okay, needing to jump into uh, the summer here. Um, just to wrap up very quickly, the uh, the results of the previous turn, not, not much to, to get excited about. Probably one thing um, just for the benefit of nothing, or the back and forth is funny. Um, over here in Dicenso land, uh, the Japanese have continuously tried to put a colonial unit or a, a detachment in Rabaul, but some way, somehow, either the Western Allies or the Soviet player gets a result or card or something that allows them to remove it. So I think this is now like the third iteration of a garrison being put in Rabaul and then having to be removed. Garrison being put in Rabaul and being removed. So Rabaul is the hotbed of some kind of resistance to Japanese occupation. Don't know exactly who would be driving that, but that's what's been going down over there uh, to a pretty significant degree. But as we go into summer, I actually made a, a mistake. Um, so I was getting ready to play Army Plan Adopted for Japan, and <clears throat> I realized that I needed to have played Food Shortages first, and um, I, I didn't do that. I, did. <laughs> I, did. I didn't do that. Um, which really hurts. Uh, I'm actually disappointed in myself a great deal because I should have been paying better attention. We've got to do food shortages or else we can't play the army plan, which can't put us in a limited war yet, which now means, um, and because, I should point out, food shortages is a rearmament card, which means I can't play army plan adopted until 1939. Aye, aye, aye. So the only thing I can say is it gives us more time for diplomacy, but I'm really annoyed at myself um, because I should have played food shortages in 1937. I didn't do that. I was focused on other things, and now I'm realizing, well, and, and we were expecting to get in the war sooner than this, but that didn't happen, and I'm, I'm not sure how I could be doing this a bit better, so I'm showing my, my noobness, uh, my newbiness to this system. So without war and our options being limited, the best I can do right now is try to get food shortages out of the way, whatever may come from that. And then uh, we'll do some more diplomacy as Japan. And then in 1939, which is way later than I want, uh, we'll be able to do the army plan 
and then play some additional mobilization cards after that um, to get us to where we need to be. So I'm, I'm really kind of annoyed with myself. Now, this would also be a condition upon which we could make the game go in a total war because technically we cheated. We selected a card that we couldn't have played in the previous uh, season, but I'm going to allow myself to fix the problem and, and be gracious to myself because, well, I'm, I'm playing myself and I can do that. And it was an honest mistake, a total like, whoops, we forgot about that. So we're going to have to deal with some food shortages. Um, the army plan is going to be delayed by that. So social issues at play here are going to keep us from, from doing these things. And all it really changes is the order of the cards. So it wasn't like, you know, I guess I was hoping to do the army plan, but we'll say that the food shortages are all of a sudden a surprise and we'll deal with that how, how we'll need to deal with that. So my apologies, guys. Screw that up. We'll talk about the new cards in the, here in a second. So Germany is going to be doing a couple of things. One, diplomatic missions in the Middle East. This is through the summer. Ideally, we get more than one positive result. And then we're going to look to demand Denmark, Denmark. Uh, in the fall. I don't think that we'll actually have Denmark resist. That's why we're doing this. We're going to try to pick it up while we can, uh, while it's still pre-war. I am not expecting things to spark up. Now, because I'm saying that, it's probably going to go this way uh, in the fall with Denmark, but we're, we'll worry about that later. And then for Japan, the, uh, the cards here, we're doing the food shortages, and we're going to do diplomatic overtures. Not ideal, but I don't I don't know what other options I really have right now. I, I maybe do need... I could look at the deck some more. Um, if we decided to do that, like, w w what are our options? Well, that still requires food shortages. Uh, we could demand Hainan, and that could... Maybe get us into the war, but it would be at war with nationalist China, which I was hoping to knock out Hopei first, honestly. Um, Mongol frontier, that would put us at war with Mongolia. That wasn't really my plan. We've got all these diplomatic overtures. We've got some other cards that, that don't necessarily do the things we might want to do. Um... And that's it. So, like, we really don't have very many options. We need to get, we need to get things handled here, or we're going to run out of time. Um, so we can kind of lean on diplomatic overtures. We can deal with some army plots, maybe, as we start running out of cards. But we gotta, we gotta keep things going at least until we can play the army plan, get limited war going, and then our options open up quite a bit. So with that unfortunate circumstance explained and the craziness that that is, we'll go ahead and play through the Axis turns. Again, we're, we're doing some diplomacy roles in the Middle East. That's going to be the main thing. Japan may be going to have some unfortunate circumstances due to the, uh, the shortages. The only thing that maybe is to our benefit is we don't have a minus one on the, uh, the table in Dicenso because the victory marker is in the zero space. So maybe that could help us. I don't know. But I'll play through that. And then when we come back, we'll show the, the initial results for summer. And uh, we'll talk about the ally card play. Okay, so pretty significant uh, turn of events here with our middle, our first, our first Middle East diplomacy role. It ends up going through a couple tables to the diplomatic incident. And I'm I was a little worried. I'm like, okay, well, what happens? Does Turkey become an allied nation? Like, oh my gosh, that would hurt. That would hurt a lot, um, our, our chances. Uh, and we lose out on a strategic hex that quickly. That would just be awful. But we roll and we get free passage, which is really interesting. So what ends up happening here is the Ottoman Empire, Turkey, gets activated. So we start putting stuff on the board. However, and actually come to think of it, I think I want to adjust some of my setup here just a little bit. Um, they get set up with a free passage marker, which means that there's no mobilization. Uh, so there's a lot of Turkey, you know, Turkish units that, that could eventually come onto the board. Um, but we need to make them a partner 
nation. I'm, and I'm not exactly sure the best way to get there with that. So we get stuff on the board. We have control now, access control of Cairo and Baghdad. These are considered, an, you know, it's an active uh, access country, but it's not fully on board. It's just a free passage. Now we can get rid of that free passage marker uh, with some other uh, political event results. Maybe we'll get that with the Middle East die roll. Um, and there's a whole boatload of additional units because we are dealing with an expanded Turkey. Lots of stuff in the delay box. However, <laughs> we don't have a lot of mechanisms to uh, to actually produce those units right away because uh, if we made Turkey a partner, which, I mean, that sounds very interesting to do, they would get a minor production strategic marker that gives them additional steps. Germany will get a... a marker that is uh, will generate minor steps and we can certainly use that to build up the uh, the Turkish armed forces but um, for now we're just gonna have to do what we can it's just it's really rather interesting because they've got enough strength to kind of just hold their own territory without being mobilized so it's not like there's a lot of offensive capability however if we can get Austria Hungary on board you know we can smoosh Greece and Bulgaria even Romania relatively easily working together and just have a lot of different uh, options uh, at our fingertips. Now, the one interesting thing I should point out is that uh, the, the with the expanded Turkey, they do get a troop convoy, uh, which is rather interesting. Um, and we could certainly use that. And the nice thing is um, the Germans, because they're a democracy, could actually leverage uh, their support markers uh, or their convoys in support of Turkey. It's just they're kind of far away. Turkey, with a free passage marker, can't actually leave its own territory. So at best, they're only defensive, but that gives us a uh, pretty good swing in strategic hexes. Two, two that are in the far reaches of the map that can sometimes be hard to get to, um, nullifying a North African campaign, in effect. Um, and what that can do for us is now uh, Germany only needs one more strategic hex, I believe, um, to enter into Axis Tide, which starts to give us better die roll modifiers. And it now removes the minus one political DRM on subsequent die rolls. So um, this is a good thing. It's not quite as good as just fully activating the Ottoman Empire, but getting them with this with free passage, I mean, I'll take it and we get the strategic hexes. So that's really important. This was a really important pickup uh, for, for Germany. And then, um, I should say, not, not as much to talk about in Japan. Uh, we're really just still posturing and getting ready for, for stuff. Uh, playing the food shortage uh, card did increase our force pull a great deal for Japan. Um, and uh, we avoided a bad result on food shortage. We got a cabinet shuffle result, which was a may flip the uh, the government marker, which means we don't have to. So, so far, so good. Uh, the, the one challenging thing uh, I will say is I played food shortage during the summer, which means we're going to have to roll on that three times, but I don't, I don't see any other good way for me to deal with this. I need to get that card out. Maybe I could wait until the, the fall to do it, but so far we're doing fine. Um, I like having the steps in our force pool. It'll it'll work itself out. We could say I'm, I'm doing reasonably well as Germany and I'm doing not as good as Japan, but we'll just have to, uh, we'll have to deal with that. Okay, so now for the Western Ally card picks, um, we're going with Arab League. This is to try to contest um, the... Any, any diplomatic play of the, uh, the Germans in the Middle East. However, you know, we didn't know that the Turk, at the time that we picked this card, we, we, we couldn't have known that Turkey was going to go the way that it did. So we'll have to roll on this and just see what happens. We're going to back that up with British guarantees. So as war is kind of churning together, we're going to try to make sure that uh, if Germany goes and fights any minor country, uh, the British can intervene and support them. Um, right now, that's the best thing I can I can try to do. Um, and then for the Western allies, 
in the Dicenso map, we're going with Commonwealth Rearmament. So we're going to increase our force pool. Uh, we're going to, we would have wanted to get some colonial steps, but here's the problem. The quit India marker is now in the strategic box. It finally came off the turn track. And that's going to affect our ability to deploy colonial steps in India. Um, we're going to have to, you know, we can do other things. We don't necessarily have to do things in India, but at some point we've either got to play the arrest Gandhi card or Indian independence. And I, I don't think I want to play Indian independence, but I can't play Gandhi arrested until limited war. So we're going to buy some time and, and do some diplomacy. Um, that may be the best thing that we can do right now. So. Let me go play um, the Allied turn, and we'll see what happens. Well, the British uh, diplomacy attempt in the Arab League fell very flat. Uh, the result we got on the table was a success, but when we actually rolled on the uh, the area table, the result was uh, result was Turkey. But because Turkey is not a neutral minor country, it basically had no effect. So so far. The Arab League not doing a whole lot of good for the British. Um, and really, the British don't have much on the board right now. Uh, a very, you know, uh, tricky position to be in. Uh, in Japan, though, or not Japan, in the Daisenso Theater, the, the theater that Japan is most concerned with, um, we did have uh, Commonwealth Rearmament, which has put, you know, a lot more uh, units into uh, the British force pool has also put a surface fleet and troop convoy uh, markers in the delay box. So, uh, oh, and we were able to get a uh, detachment deployed. I put it in Brunei just because right now there's not that many other places to put it. Um, that, that feels good, and we'll probably get that result again, and we'll put something in Port Moresby next. Um, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe we ought to do that. Maybe we ought to do that right now. I don't know. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll uh, we'll put the detachment in, in Port Moresby. We don't want to just lose that, so I'd like to be able to get a unit transported in there, and it's an active open port now, so that that's doable. I'm less concerned with Brunei at the moment. We can work on that later. Um, so Commonwealth rearmament happening. I'd even say that that Britain is more armed in the Pacific than they are in Europe, but um, they, they can start the slow activity. Quit India is a problem, so Quit India is affecting the board. That means that we can't put colonial troops, which are really the, the troops that we would likely be generating on the map uh, in India. They can't, like, we can't put Indian colonial units in India until we get rid of that marker. So if we were to get some uh, I don't mind this stuff. I've just got stuff strewn about. Um, if we were going to, uh, use colonial steps, we'd be building them in Australia or New Zealand at this point until we can resolve it. And our, and our options are going to be limited for a while. So we, we did the rearmament. We'll worry about some diplomacy next, uh, as, uh, as we can. So then looking at the Soviet card plays, so for the European theater, we are going to be playing a five-year plan, um, so we will we will work that out. That's more of a requirement card than anything. We're going to try some negotiations with Bible Russia. That's to help us out there. I should point out, for collective security, I am playing with the optional rule that gives the Soviets some additional colonial units uh, so they can get more HQs on the board, so we are playing with that. Um, but that's the game plan for, for the European theater. And um, we're starting to run out of cards that are really useful to use in pre-war. So we're going to be doing Russian rearmament. Again, Just we're, we're getting a lot more uh, rearmament in the Pacific for some reason. Uh, but we're going to get some units out there. And then uh, we're going to have border defense, which is really a null card, just because we don't, we don't have a whole lot else um, to use. But this will get us uh, some additional steps and some stuff. To look forward to long term. It's just good to get these cards out when we can, how we can. I don't expect that, that the Soviets are going to do a whole lot here, so you know they'll they'll play their stuff. We'll see maybe a few changes to the board, and then I'm just going to play through the rest of the summer turn 
uh, summer turns. And when we come back, we'll talk about the aftermath of the rest of summer and we'll be prepared to leap into uh, the fall. Okay, I have to kind of talk about this before we start leaning into the, uh, the fall uh, card selection stuff. The, uh, the die rolls with the Middle East uh, card for the, the Germans have gone very interestingly. So one case, and it required us using um, uh, some luck to do it, luck marker, uh, but Germany has managed to get rid of the free passage marker in Turkey. So we can now look at a actual cohesive alliance with the Ottoman Empire, which comes sooner than Austria-Hungary, which is quite amusing, but, but nonetheless a very important change. What this means is um, while we would have liked to have still gotten that mobilization die roll to get more strength on the board, and it's a shame we didn't get it. Um, this still enables us to, to move, move to support Turkey. And importantly, uh, Turkey can now attack into, say, Bulgaria or Greece, which are kind of the obvious places that we're going to need to, to inflict some pain on the allies or at least seize some territory. Um, and so that's, that was a very good result, but it, it costs some resources to do it. But I feel like we're in very good shape there. Uh, that was for the second summer turn. The third summer turn ended up with a wildly different result that I could not have predicted, and I'm not sure what to make of here. Um, but basically, uh, what we have going on is Spain, though it does not have the Basque province area, Spain got affected by minor country politics. And, and again, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well... What's the worst that could happen, right? Spain goes into a, into a civil war. I don't care. And I get free passage again. So Spain is now, uh, again, a, a Axis minor country, um, no mobilization, and it can't leave its own territory. But this is, this is pretty significant, um, if only because uh, what this can provide, I'm not sure how we're going to get units there, but we can certainly... We can certainly entertain the idea of uh, trying to get German units down here to Spain um, and, and maybe, you know, attacking, you know, having a, a safe place to attack uh, Gibraltar from or, or who knows what. I mean, I'm not sure what to make of this. Now, the problem is, you know, Spain's not a very powerful nation and it would come under threat pretty easily and convincingly by uh, the the allies. And so I'm not sure, you know, what to do there. What is nice is we, we have good control over that strategic hex for the time being. Um, and again, you know, that if we can attack into France, right, remember, France is going to be um, unprepared. So what this could allow us to do, and I'm not quite sure how we would do it, but if I can somehow convince Spain to to get rid of the free passage marker, we're going to need pressure neutrals to come up to get it. But if we can, we could much more easily grab all the cities of France um, because there's going to be very little anchor point to defend or to hold steady against the Germans. Much more easy for us to capture these cities, and that could lead to a liberation of France and... You know, boy, that just makes this whole game a very different kind of story being told at that point if we can achieve it. So it's important. I don't know how important it will be that Spain has become this. It would obviously be much, much, much better to to not have that free passage marker. Um, I'd love to remove that somehow. I think the only way it's going to happen is with pressures neutral. I'm not sure if there's some other influence or diplomacy move I can do that will affect that. I, I really need to think about it because, gosh, that would just be really strong. The only way I can get German units down here is to ship them all the way around to uh, Cadiz, and that that feels like that would be difficult to achieve. Um, but, the, you know, the option is there for us, potentially, and I, I definitely like the idea that we're not going to try to do a case yellow on France. I think this is really making me think, let's just go for it. Let's flip France if we can make it happen with Germany. Um, and then we, we can just operate very well. If we can smash our way 
into Gibraltar. I mean, you know, that effectively keeps the allies out of the Met. Um, and that is super important. So, boy, a lot of things are kind of coming together there. Now, to offset some of those things, the British did get fortunate and they managed to get influence in Persia. Um, that doesn't have an immediate effect, but it does protect that country a bit in terms of aligning and then having a place for the Allies to maybe push into the Ottoman Empire. Uh, that tough terrain in the mountains of Iran and per, you know, Persia is going to be tough going if we actually try to make ground there. So not, not a whole lot to concern ourselves with. I'm not worried about that Western influence. Um, you know, they're, they're obviously responding to the mobilization of the Ottoman Empire, right? Um, and then, you know, the Soviets really haven't done a whole lot here. Their five-year plan die rolls have come up, basically no results. So it's funny, in this campaign, we're really wildly swinging between uh, no results or very little results to crazy results for the Germans right now. They have gotten very fortunate. Um, everyone else seems to be having a harder time, including Japan, for that matter. They're, they are having a tougher time. Uh, with things both diplomatically and just getting things to go their way. Germany's just getting the best luck so far, and they need to carry that as long as, as they can manage. So, yeah, that, that's it for summer, folks. Um, we're going to head into the fall turn now. Um, I need to think through the card play because this has certainly changed a lot. Um, those fortunate die rolls... I'm not sure what Britain can do. I think the diplomacy stuff is running uh, pretty dry, and if nothing else, we need to figure out how we're going to fight, <laughs> how we're going to fight this war, because uh, the Britain, the, the, the British are missing a lot of strength on the map, and again, between, you know, German capability, Spain, I got to find Spain's fleet, uh, fleet, Schiffskrieg fleet units, actually, I forgot to set that up. We need to get them on, and then uh, who, who knows what. I mean, it, things are looking trickier by the day. If we can if we can do something to the effect of knocking France out, quickly getting units into Gibraltar, kind of shutting that whole thing down, um, that would then enable us to use uh, our convoys down here, even the Turkish convoys if need be, um, to ship German units to the eastern parts of the Ottoman Empire or whatever they want to do. I mean, this just gives us a lot of latitude um, against Britain, against, you know, pretty much pretty much everybody. Um, we could knock France out. We could, we could maybe entertain the idea of putting Britain under a huge amount of pressure and then just kind of break things down from there, essentially. So... Um, Lots to think about, so I need to. I really need to, to think through what the card picks are going to be for fall and, and and winter. Or I guess I we, we know what the cards are going to be for fall, but our decision like what to what to plan for winter is going to be really important. Every card for fall we already know about, but just what we do with it is going to be coming into a lot of scrutiny at this point. Um, demanding Denmark, like if that die roll goes against, goes against Germany right now, I'm not terribly worried because I think we're in a decent spot to, to take ground and, and operate. Um, given there's no longer a minus one of the die roll, it's actually going to make it even easier to, uh, to get Denmark. So, um, I think we can go ahead and do that without much fear. And then we can start preparing for, uh, what will be, I think, a much, a much, much easier uh, play against Norway when the time comes to pick up, uh, to pick up that um, strategic hex. So, yeah, boy, tough stuff, guys. I, it, 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 this is getting trickier by the minute, and I'm continuing to be frustrated by the the Japanese advancements. Now they they've managed to avoid the worst results from the food shortages, so I can at least be glad for that as Japan, but we're still on a terrible uh, timeline right now. Like, we're just, I don't think we're going to get very far in terms of victory points on the uh, the Pacific map unless we get a pretty dramatic turn of events. We're just, like, there. there's ground we could be making 
that we're not making in China. We're not getting anywhere. Um, we're just not getting what we need. I'm desperately trying to find a way to end limited war, but there's just not seemingly not a lot coming up for me, or at least I'm not looking in the right places. Maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know. Anyway, um, let me get ready to talk uh, fall term stuff, and we'll do that next. Okay, I need to state something. I think I have royally screwed up the Western Allies Pacific card play, if only because I have put myself into a hole in terms of what cards I can play and when. So my play of British rearmament, while I think ordinarily a good move, does not take into account the fact that we are now still in limited war. Oh, I'm not sorry, not even limited war, pre-war which means our, our Dai Senso card plays become incredibly restricted. In terms of what we can even play, just to show, but we couldn't, we couldn't play League of Nations, though uh, maybe I should have earlier or something, I don't know. But we just had recently played the British Rearmament, so we couldn't pick this card. We can't pick this card. Now the problem is we can't, play this card because it's pre-war um, and limited war has not occurred in Europe either and we can't play that because it needed card five uh, we can't play that can't play that because that's it's it's limited war and we can't play that because you need rearmament or American mobilization and again neither of these are at play and we've already <laughs> we've already, We've already done everything that we could do. So what does this mean? Well, it means, and I guess this makes sense logically for a second here, um, just knowing that, okay, well, um, if, you, if you read the historical notes for Quit India, you know, okay, yeah, you know, the, the pressure, um, the pressure of India being in danger of Japan sort of kind of forced the British hand, they arrested Gandhi, that's sort of the narrative you would see in the normal game. Um, because, you know, war is afoot with Japan. Like, war is afoot with Japan. Need to respond to that. We're going to have to arrest Gandhi. We can't settle this right now. Too much is at stake. Well, because war has not broken out, there's still kind of border disputes, heavy border, border disputes in northern China. Uh, and, and despite um, the rearmament of Britain, the big problem here is I can't play anything else. I, I've got to... Uh, I have a bunch of, of limited war cards ready to be played, but I can't. So I'm going to be playing Churchill Diplomacy uh, because that's what we had selected before. And I'm going to have to pick Indian Independence because it's the only other blue card that I can play right now until we get to the new year. And then I can play a different mobilization card. I can play other stuff. And we're certainly going to do that, but I have no choice right now but to play this. It is my only real choice that I have in my hand. I don't know what else I can do. Um, I have to play this, I think, unless there's some other way I can avoid this. Um, but, you know, we're going to remove Gandhi arrested. We're going to remove Quit India. Um, if no hex in India contains access unit, then we're going to have India get its independence and play some other die roll stuff. Now, it's not an immediate bad thing, but it does do a couple of things. It's going to mean that, yes, the strategic hexes in India um, remain to be, you know, out of Axis hands, but as a neutral minor country, it could lead them to being diplomatically influenced by Japan. And it so happens that they're going to be rolling against diplomatic overtures. So who knows what's going to happen, but oh my gosh, could you imagine... Uh, if Japan flipped India, I mean, that would be catastrophically bad. So I'm kind of in a weird state. Uh, it makes me worried, but I also acknowledge that technically the game logic is correct. If the threat of Japan was not as great and the civil disobedience operated a little bit differently, yeah, maybe maybe you have to make some different choices. As Britain, uh, your moderate socialist values in this timeline maybe is saying, yeah, give independence to India. It's only right. You know, we can't keep doing this colonialism thing. You know, Churchill's not in power. Uh, so maybe other people are, are making decisions here. It really calls to question how chaotic the, the narrative gets if limited war doesn't kick off like it historically does. I mean, you kind of have to 
to make different different tries. I could have maybe gone to demand Hainan, but that requires the Navy in charge of the Japanese government, and that's not the case either. So I kind of, I've continued to not quite get the results that are needed uh, to get the ball rolling, and um, I've not I don't know. I, I think any opportunities I had to launch the war too, too early, I wanted to give some space to. Now I haven't quite been able to find the opportunity to go to war because I can't um, as Japan. So weird, weird circumstances. But anyway, as we look to the Axis uh, fall turn card choice, again, we're going to see uh, demand Danemark. So we're going to get some units on the board, um, and we're very likely to see Danemark given over. Why is that useful to us? Well, it means that um, we don't have to waste time getting set up uh, for uh, our Operation Weissbrung. Uh, we'll be able to have a German uh, paratrooper unit like ready to rock and roll to march into uh, Denmark, Norway pretty easily, like immediately. Um, and we'll also very likely ensure the safety uh, of Narvik in the north, I think or at least within reason. So that, that's a pretty good hit there. And then we're going to do our rearmament for the year because Germany hasn't done their rearmament. That will get them uh, some additional stuff to be operating. So it should be a pretty good season for Germany. Um, again, for Japan, we're doing the diplomatic overtures. And even Japan is starting to run out of pre-war cards and we're having to play army plot, which maybe this is the thing that's going to get us what we need. Um, the factions agitate within the Japanese government. One of these results could actually throw us into war. So we don't want to fail your command, but anything like this could actually work out in our favor. I'm still waiting. Uh, I got to wait until the new year to play army plan adopted. So I could, uh, you know, have this set up to be our spring uh 39 card, so fall, winter, and then this would be our spring card, and then that would give us the summer of 1939 to play something more significant in limited war. Kooky, crazy planning. Don't know what to do with that, but yeah. So let me go play through the German turn here, and then I will show the results of that first fall turn, and we'll get into the, uh, the allied card play and uh, turn. Okay, well, just to cover really quickly, um, the Japanese diplomacy failed, so really nothing to talk about there, at least so far. We'll see what they get in, few, in the next fall turn, I guess. Uh, Germany did succeed in getting the ceded lands for Denmark, Denmark, and so we have units there now garrisoning the capital, and we should be in pretty good shape, basically, to when the time comes, uh, once we are in proper war with the west. I assume we're going to go west first at this point. Uh, we should be able to use our German paratroopers to grab Oslo without much pain or suffering at all. Like that should be an easy pickup for us. Um, and we should be in a decent position to also get uh, units up into um, uh, Narvik or at least, you know, not have to worry as much about Narvik. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. I think that was the right move. Um, what it what it basically means is rather than taking, uh, you know, what could be more than one turn to try to take Norway, Denmark in its entirety, um, we should be able to do it in in one fell swoop uh, easily with our our paratroopers. Now I think I'm trying to remember. I think I could do it in one fell swoop anyway, so I'm not sure. Maybe this actually doesn't give us much advantage, um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's no advantage to it. I, I'm going to have to remember exactly how to take Oslo um, the last time we did it. I know we had, back when we were playing our Case Yellow scenario, we had a paratrooper go from here to like here, and then they walked over, but we had to get the... Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember. What was it? We had we had the paratrooper units start here, walk to here, blitz them over to here, and then they walked in. So it could be I didn't actually <laughs> I didn't actually get anything for doing this. Um, now that I'm thinking about it after the fact, I don't know. 
somebody should tell me, is there any point to getting Denmark? Because uh, we, we didn't get Norway. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Um, I don't know what to think about that. Anyway, we did it um, for funsies, I guess, uh, potentially. Um, and that's it. So we move on. For the Allies, we're going to have... This is kind of an important play. We got some more mobilization. We got to try to get this out while we can. That's going to be coming in the winter because we've not had it yet. We're going to do British guarantees. This will at least put some protective edge around uh, the the rest of the folks that we're looking at. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't. I can't actually play this because. Uh, let's see, we're, we, this would be the winter turn, but we played uh, Continuing Rearmament in the spring, so we actually have to pick a different card. Um, we will try some Diplomacy with a little Entente, I guess, and while that doesn't seem to be making a lot of headway, we'll, we'll try it. Then for the Pacific, um, we are trying Diplomacy. And we are being forced into that Indian independence situation that I described earlier. So we'll play through this very quickly. We'll come back and do uh, the Soviets. We'll finish fall, and then we'll talk about uh, the December stuff. Uh, get into the December stuff, and we'll be wrapping up the video here shortly. Okay, I've technically already played through the first turn of the Soviets just to kind of move quickly through it. But to, to show uh, we're aiming for rearmament, we're doing negotiations with Belarusia. we are getting an HQ. This is the one of the HQs that we can only build up um, with a colonial step. And while we have colonial steps in our force pool is Russia, the only way we can get them uh, is by breaking down a two-stepper. So we're kind of in effect like, I don't know how you want to look at it, converting steps into colonial units, which we will then reconvert into headquarters. So I am doing that. Now we did the die roll. We got a no result. We got a two. I suspect we'll be able to get something here. I mean, if you look at the table, we have a high chance of getting something. So I'm, I'm, I think we're going to get by the Russia as Russia. I, it just, we didn't get it on the first die roll. I'm not worried about luck. Uh, we'll worry about that later and we'll, we'll try it. So far, no result. And then on the, the Dicenso map, you know, we were playing, uh, the border defense, so there's really nothing to do. nothing to do. All is quiet, uh, but we'll worry about Siberian troop transfer uh, soon enough. Oh, I, oh, I can't pick Siberian troop transfer. Why am I doing, guys? I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, we'll try a land chow agreement, um, and maybe do some diplomacy in the new year. I don't know. Or I'm sorry, rather, in the in in the winter, um, you guys can tell uh, by, just by watching this. I'm getting I'm getting a little frazzled with the card choices because I really did not expect to be at pre-war so long on Dyson. So it's really goofing up what I expected to be able to do um, for everybody because everybody's running low on pre-war cards to play, and we're you know the timer's going to tick out here. We will be in limited war very soon, but it definitely was not on the cadence I was expecting. We're just not getting. The die rolls or the choices, I guess, I, I, I still wonder if maybe I could have done triggered it earlier, but it, it at this point it's fine. So with that first sort of turn played through, um, I'll take care of some delay rolls for some force pull stuff, delay segment stuff, uh, and we will get into the second turn of fall. I'll just play through that off camera and we'll come back with the prep for winter. All right, the end results aren't aren't too terribly exciting. Um, really, the British did not get very much in the way of results from their guarantees card, other than getting the guarantee policy change, which was the most important part of it. They didn't really get any military aid out, and that could be a problem. Um, Japan has continued to not see any diplomatic results, and really uh, the best they could do was put some additional steps in the revolt, so that's a little more secure now under their control. Uh, surprisingly, the Soviet Union did not get a result uh, against Belarusia. 
Um, they almost did. Uh, we started to go down a path of multiple tables, but those multiple tables came out nothing. So once again, Soviet Union really not getting and anything good. I mean, they're just not getting good results on their diplomacy. And that was, unfortunately to me, like the whole idea of collective security was, well, we, we're not going to worry too much. We're going to get all these countries back under our control um, via, uh, you know, that setup. And that's just not coming to pass. Um, so we're going to have to worry uh, uh, about that as the Soviets a little bit, but given probably the way that a lot of these um, these activities are going to be underway for the Germans, uh, they, they'll probably end up invading by Russia or Ukraine anyway, um, just on the odds of things. But we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not sure what to think yet on that. Um, we're, we've still got a lot of diplomacy as the Germans yet to come. And I've actually got a really powerful play coming up uh, that's really going to depend on how well uh, our next cards go, which which could be quite devastating to the game. There's sort of this weird situation I think is occurring where like I feel like the Axis is going to be in a really strong state for much of the game. That could be very, very powerful ultimately uh, for the game and could be tipping it to the Axis on the Europe map. But in the Pacific map, I kind of feel like it's the opposite and Japan's really not getting to where it's going to need to be for the long haul of the campaign. So that's kind of an interesting juxtaposition and it's going to be keeping the game worthwhile playing even if I feel like the European axis is is winning handily they that will be offset maybe by a bad situation on the Pacific map we'll, we'll see how it goes um, and then just really quickly just to, we're going to get into the winter turn we're going to do the winter turn for the axis we're going to be doing our rearmament card we waited until winter uh, to get our German rearmament and then we're going to be hitting um some diplomacy uh, in the hope of expanding our reach before we play a really big card later in 1939, which will be Pact of Steel during the summer that could really throw the game into a, a, a deep pitch, I guess, in favor of the Axis. And then for Japan, uh, we've got the Army Plot. That's just to kind of get us through until we can play the uh, Army Plan Adopted, our, our uh, mobilization card, rearmament card. 1939 which will kick us off in the limited war finally at last so hopefully we don't get anything too bad on this card i'm not sure what to expect there the dice have been kind of funky you know we've just had some weird weird results um to some degree it does make me think i'd, I'd prefer it if the tables we were rolling on had i guess more potential results or like the the chances were different because sometimes like yeah we we do get some deep, interesting results or some pretty dramatic results. But other times it's just like, man, no result, no result. Or there's just something like we're not getting anything interesting out of it. I don't know if that's really a criticism, but just kind of the, the way that my dies are, are rolling here. My die are rolling. My dies. My die. My die are rolling this way. Um, so that's the Axis start off. We'll, we'll start with them playing through the first turn of winter. Um, and as we finish up, we'll take a look at the subsequent factions and look to finish up 1938. Okay, realizing that this video is getting pretty long, I just played through the rest of winter, um, so we'll, we'll talk about the results of that. Um, for the Germans, uh, they did remove their uh, one of their diplomacy cards as a requirement for their continuing rearmament. We kept a demand card, we kept demand Lithuania, um, because if I fail to get, uh, or if I, I guess if I succeed in getting Gao Moselin uh, from Belgium and Holland with a demand card. I, I want to back up. And, you know, I think at some point we're going to need to get into the Baltic states anyway. So it just, it's going to behoove us uh, to kind of be well positioned there. So I'm going to be looking at that uh, intently to ensure that we're in good shape. So that will certainly be something we'll, we'll be looking at. Um, and then we got rid of our production directive for, for the subs. I just, I don't know that I am going to be, I'm going to be caring too much about the subs. Uh, I want to pursue other more interesting options, I guess, just to see what will happen. I don't know. Um, and then for Japan, uh, they, they threw a couple different people's cards, not just Japan's uh, army plot, though the first army plot play did lead to this, and then a kind of backfire on the Indian independence 
political die roll of the Western Allies has seen a couple of steps actually lost from the nationalist Chinese, which is softening them up uh, for conflict with Japan, which is a good thing. However, one of the big changes is via the Lan Chao Agreement card of uh, the Soviets, and just to show, they're going to be following that up with uh, additional rearmament. So Soviet Union is actually going to be pretty, <clears throat> pretty strong on the Dicenso map, all things considered. But with the Lan Chao Agreement, uh, they actually managed to restore uh, the the posture policy of resistance to the Chinese communists. So once again, uh, the Chinese communists are aligned more closely with the nationalists. So a lot of back and forth there. That's kind of been weird to see uh, in, in general, but that's kind of where it was going. Again, that Indian independence we had to play. So India is now independent. Um, we lose some of our colonial units as Britain. Britain, I think, is greatly weakened by this. And I think this is one of those weird things like, again, it makes sense, but boy, it's going to put a weird spin if Japan was lucky and managed to get some diplomacy into India. I don't think that's going to happen at this point, but that's like a really great option for Japan at this point. They would love to do that. You get two strategic hexes, that's beautiful. That's, that's amazing. That's great. Let's do that alternatively going for the Philippines. I don't know, but we, we just can't seem to make any headway uh, in the, you know, the East Asian co-prosperity sphere. It's just not manifesting. We're failing all our diplomacy as Japan, and the only thing we've got going for us is our military preparation, if we're lucky for that. So those are kind of the highlights over there. Uh, in Europe, Russian rearmament is going on, so they're just building up forces, trying to get prepared, getting HQ on the board. Britain, uh, Britain was, well, and I should show this too. So Russia's card being the Russian rearmament. We'll then be looking to do central alliance. So some last ditch effort at uh, some uh, diplomacy, maybe to upset the, uh, the, German, um, the German diplomacy game, uh, offset Poland or something would be ideal. But, uh, you know, the Western allies were trying to do little entente for just that reason, and they failed that. So now they're going to be doing mobilization in the new year. Um, and we sort of already talked about the, the German approach. Um, we are going to be doing American rearmament in the Dicenso map in the spring of next year in 1939, just because that's going to help unlock some additional cards um, and kind of get us on a good track, uh, get some prerequisites out. The things are all a little bit dicey here. It's really hard to you know, I think once limited war really kicks off in some of these places, it'll be easier to figure out, like, what are we going to try to do? We can plan our years out a bit better. Um, so much has been disrupted on the on the Senso map. Europe, it makes much more sense. I think we're on, you know, all the plans that all the sides have decided early on in our strategy video, like they've tried to keep to that. Um, I would generally say Russia and Britain have not been very successful in executing those strategies. They've really not gained much. Meanwhile, Germany's kind of gotten more than it could ever want. I mean, we've got Turkey in proper, though, without mobilization, so we missed out on some important steps for Turkey. We have Austria, Hungary, and Poland on the verge of joining. That would be a huge benefit. And then we got, um, we got uh, Spain uh, in, well, still only free passage. That's how Turkey started, so we could um, be in a position where if if the diplomacy for Germany goes right, 1939, before war breaks out, we will have the majority of uh, these countries in Europe uh, in, our, in our alliance. So, you know, Turkey, that's a big help. Um, having Spain active and fully engaged would be a big help. Um, Austria-Hungary, Poland would be big helps, because then all we really need to do in terms of consolidating our control is you know, knock out Belgium, get into France, knock that out, ideally conquer it outright without depending on Case Yellow, and then um, basically liberate it. And then with the support of Turkey, go into or, influ you know, do something to Greece, clean up Romania one way or the other, align them or otherwise, deal with Italy. And if we're able to do all these things within the first year, and if we can even entertain ideas of a sea lion, yes or no, I mean, the normal, you know, hit the West stuff could be going on, but in the process, we will have consolidated control 
over all the main strategic hexes that are not Soviet, which would give us, in 1941, obviously, our, our shot, but we would have the ability to hit the Caucasus uh, from this region, potentially. I mean, I don't know if I'll need to. It'd be nice to influence the Caucasus. We just haven't seen that occur. Um, and then we are, you know, we're, would be working our way through Eastern Europe. If we have to fight Belarus or Ukraine, that's one thing. But ideally, we will have taken the Baltic states, which means very early on, Germany should be at the gates of Leningrad. So I think things are definitely shaping up to advantage us a lot. I think we'd be in a pretty reasonable um, position to be able to say uh, that we'll be at Axis Tide 3. Um, I think that's very likely possible. Maybe even Axis Tide 4 if we're really fortunate. And then we'd play, you know, Festung Europa at some point. That's the only option we'll have. But sticking our flag at Axis Tide 3 or 4 is going to be really good and it's going to be really hard for the Allies to come back because they're basically going to be requiring both the Americans and the British to, you know, take hexes back and at the same time basically um, garrison every area that they conquer, um, which will mean as they try to get into Germany, uh, Germany will be, you know, they basically will not have spent out a lot of its strength defending the Americans and the British will be attrited by, you know, fighting Spain or fighting France if we manage to flip France. They'll, they'll have to leave steps behind to garrison France and, and all these things. That will mean a stronger Germany to fend off in the late stages of the war and, and may mean an Axis victory, at least on the Totaler Creek map. So really shaping up, I can see kind of the way things can pan out there. For, uh, for Japan, not nearly as good. We're, we're, that one's going to be really interesting, interesting to see where we get to. Um, but we'll cover the rest of uh, 1939 in the next video. So that's it for 1938. I would gen gen generally, generally say this year has been another year of buildup and jockeying for position. I think Germany has had great success. Everybody else, uh, you know, either neutral or not good success, or at least, you know, retrograde movement compared to Germany. You know, if you're not gaining, you're... you're fallen behind, I guess, at this point. So we'll see more of this stuff uh, evolve out 1939. We will see limited war in 1939, uh, absolutely, because we are going to have army plan executed in the spring. That will bring limited war to the Pacific, uh, you know, a couple years late at this point, but, you know, so it goes. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to check out the written session report on Board Game Geek, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. So take care, keep gaming.